Hello everyone, Marcus J back here. I wanted to give you guys an overview and a video that shows the progression of my instrument panel design for the Lancer 360. It's been a long process. Um, I think it's going on three years or maybe more. I hate to admit that. So this is what I started with. I received this CAD file from a friend of a friend. It's kind of the typical layout. It's got the standard switches across the bottom. Uh, G3X touch here, a couple circuit breakers up top, and it also has an array of, I don't know, 30 plus circuit breakers over here on the right. I had an idea in mind what I wanted to put on my panel, and I knew I wanted two G3X touch, a Garmin GTN650, and some other things. So I was lucky enough to come across a used instrument panel out of a Lancer 360 that had a G3X Touch, a GTN650, autopilot, audio panel. Uh, it also had a vertical power, um, it's a power distribution circuit breaker system. So it helps me get rid of all the circuit breakers on the panel because everything's integrated into the box. And you can access and control it through the touch screen on the G3X, which is really cool. The other thing it had was a GRT Mini EFIS as a backup instrument. So that was a good starting point. Basically, I took what you see on the screen now and just scrapped it all and started over. So if I go over here and flip everything else on, you can kind of see the progression. This is an instrument panel I come up with a couple years ago. I wasn't quite finished because I also have um, an EFII fuel injection system. This is a um, unit that controls your fuel injection and your ignition. There's a lot of control over the entire system, as well as their EFII system. I have the power distribution set up as well, and th there's a lot of redundancy built in, but it takes a lot of different switches and stuff to control it. So. I had a lot of work to do in trying to lay stuff out and get it in the right order. In addition to that, after getting my instrument rating just this past winter, I realized how important it was to have at least one backup instrument. And yeah, I know what you're saying that these G3X touch screens, they're redundant. You know, if one goes out, you know, the, you'll have the other one. But with them all tied together, I thought, you know what, it doesn't hurt to have a backup. And this GRT Avionics Mini EFIS, I already have. I bought it with a panel, it's paid for, it's already wired up, why not use it? It's not gonna hurt anything other than trying to get it packaged on the panel. So there wasn't a lot of room left with this laid out the way it was. So I kind of scrapped this and started all over. <laughs> if you look at what I did here, this, I think, is about where I am 99% sure this is what I want. Um, I even have the console drawn in. I have the front nose gear tunnel drawn in, the fuel tank rear wall. The cool thing about Garmin Avionics is you can go on the Garmin website and you can download these math files so that you can put them into your panel if you have a, a CAD system like this, you can put them in your panel and you can move them around and make sure you have clearance. Like this, I have plenty of clearance to the fuel tank. There's probably five or six inches behind there for the wiring, so plenty of room. Gives me a perfect way to put my cutouts in so I make sure everything fits nice and tight. And you can see from this, there's quite a bit of packaging space. The, the GTN650 is probably the biggest piece of equipment that goes in there. And then, of course, like that vertical power uh, unit, that goes back behind the instrument panel as well. There's quite a bit of extra boxes and stuff that, that run the G3X that go back there. So there's plenty of space back there for that stuff. But getting the layout right was what I was concerned with. And I want it to flow. I want everything to be smooth and basically be, you could, you could operate the instrument panel blindfolded if you needed to. So let's take a look. Over here on the left, we jump in the thing. When we're ready, you select your start battery, one or two, your fuel pump, you put it on auto or backup, 
and your injector you can run off of ECU1 or ECU2. It's kind of a backup. If you think you're having an issue with one of them, you can switch to the other ECU and it'll run the injectors as well. Bottom row, left ignition, right ignition, and a push button start. And then I even put the key in here. <laughs> I must have too much time on my hand for that. And then up top here, we have a button for left seat. That will be, the idea is have heated seats in this because we live in the north and it's cold and I want to be able to fly in the winter, <laughs> at least be somewhat comfortable. So we'll see how that goes. And then emergency power switch. This is a switch that's provided by EFII and it, it goes with the whole the backup system and um, I even drew the back of it in to make sure I had space back there. So that's part of that EFII system. So your plane's running, now you reach over here, flip on Avionics Master, put your, these are your transfer pumps. On a Lance Air, there's two pumps. There's a pump under each seat that controls from the wing tanks, it fills up to the header tank. Not every Lance Air has a header tank, mine does. I, I decided to stick with the header tank. Between the wing tanks and the header tank, I should have about 58 gallons of usable fuel. So these are the transfer pump switches. They transfer pump under the seat up to the header tank and you can select, you can turn them on independently if you wanted to, say you wanted to rebalance the plane or maybe you were having an issue with one pump, you can run them separate. I could have probably put them on one, um, but I thought to myself, well, if I wanted to transfer fuel out of just one wing tank, um, then I want to be able to run them independent. And then bottom row, autopilot, auxiliary switch, and pitot heat. And same for the right seat heat up here. Then down here, put kind of the, basically the, all the lighting switches are together down here. So landing taxi, beacon nav strobe, panel lights. And then of course up top, we have dimmers for uh, map light, panel light, and gear lights, which is this indicator here. This I believe is out of a Lance Air 4. They made these for the Lance Air 4. So I picked one of those up not too long ago. It's a little less packaging space than putting in, you know, four individual gear lights. And I like that. It looks clean too. Low voltage light here. <clears throat> I put a takeoff and go around button right underneath the landing gear because I figured if you're reaching around, if you want to do a go around, let's say, you're going to reach up and you're probably going to retract the gear. You're going to hit takeoff go around button which I believe brings up a missed approach plate on the G3X. I hope I'm right. And, and then also um, you're gonna retract your gear. So I put those close together. Over here, I added smart glide button. So that's a feature of the G3X, it's really cool. If you haven't seen that, you gotta go look it up, the smart glide button uh, for the G3X touchscreen on the experimentals. Go check it out on the Garmin website, that's pretty cool. And then parking brake, that knob or pull cable will have to run down probably beside the nose gear tunnel somewhere to the, the actuator. It's basically a hydraulic um, valve that shuts off or turns on the parking brake, locks the fluid in there. And then, of course, I made room for this mini EFIS by a GRT to go right in there. Again, it was, it's free. It was, it's already paid for. It's in the panel. It's wired up. I'll just have to move it to a different location and put it in here. I figured why not? If the whole system goes down, I got this GRT to back me up and it has a battery backup as well. So why not, right? Then here we got fuel tank lights for uh, low, full, and when the pumps are running left and right to show you they're on. And then four simple circuit breakers. Wanted these to kind of have quick and easy access to a uh, gear pump, the master of course, Lights, lights probably could have been hooked into the VPX, um, especially it's only a one amp circuit breaker. So that may go away. I may use that for something else. And then the seats, I wanted quick access to the seats just because heated seats draw a lot of, um, a lot of amperage. And I just wanted to be sure that if I thought there was an issue with the heated seats that I could reach over and just pop that circuit breaker real quick. And then here's the ELT control head right here. USB outlet on the right, and we got autopilot. This will actually be a GMC 307, which is the 
same size as the 507 with the same controls, but it's wired uh, the same as uh, the old 305. So a 305 and a 507 are wired differently. And I think it's, it's like serial versus RS-232 or something like that, I don't know. So this will be a 307 that goes in there. And then GTN 650, and I think a GMA 240 audio panel. And then of course, flaps are real close to the throttle, so probably won't have to take my hand off the throttle to operate the flaps which is, I, I kind of wanted that so that I could reach up with maybe with one finger and hit the flaps up or down. And then also the same thing with landing light to switch from wig wag. So let's say you turn final and you want to flip it to the solid landing light on. I could just reach over and, and hit the button without having to take my hand off the throttle and reach across the dash somewhere to hit that. And then we got ram air, cabin heat, a couple pull cords, and like I say, the lighting group right here. And then I push the EFII control, uh, control head, control module. So this has all the settings for your fuel injection and ignition. It wasn't something I was concerned with, um, not like a flight instrument where you're having to look at it all the time and it needs to be right up in front of you. So I thought this is where I can gain some space. I just pushed it down to the front of the center console at the bottom. And I think it's angled just enough probably 30 degrees or so where I, I should be able to read it no problem without moving around too much. And then for anyone who's instrument rated, you know what these are. Good spot to put a pen or pencil so you can access it quick to write down, you know, clearances or, or uh, changes to your flight plan. And then an audio port right down here to tie into the audio system, listen to my music. And what else? Over here we put headphone jacks, kind of under the side rail to get them out of the way. So hopefully there won't be any cords laying across the console. I think I have everything. The only thing I wanted to put in here that I haven't is a, I wanted to maybe put a defroster fan to point up on, uh, be ducted up to the base of the windshield so that if I needed it, I could uh, flip that fan switch on and defrost the windshield. Um, I'm just out of room. And these switches are, these switches are actually pretty big switches. I thought maybe I could squeeze it in here right to the next to the right seat, but it's a little tight to the upper corner, and I need the USB cords or chargers somewhere there too. Um, so that's the only part that's probably undecided is whether I could squeeze in that extra switch. Let's see. I think I actually might have. Yeah, so if I put it in, see it's it's right out by the corner. I it might be okay to do that, and then I would just you move the USB somewhere else. Maybe I'd put the USB down in this corner right here. Plus the cords would be hanging lower. So that's the only option would be switching these two up, moving USB down here. Other than that, what I did was I cut this off just below this audio panel and I 3D printed this whole bottom end. So the yellow is the existing pieces that are in the Lance Air for the center console. I'm not sure why, I think that the notch or the cutout was the, the guy who was building this before me that I bought it from, I believe this had the trim switches in here and that's why it kind of sat down. So the yellow is the existing panel that's in there and I just built this around it for now. So what I did was I 3D printed all of this lower portion with the little pen pencil holders and these switches and the throttle and prop control. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering where the mixture control is, it's the EFII system, you don't have a mixture control anymore. So it's built into the system you can control your mixture from this control head, but you don't have a mixture control cable like you do on other other airplanes. So I 3D printed everything from the audio panel down so that I can go and try it out and see that everything is where I want it, where I can reach for it, and um, everything flows as it should. After that, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably print the whole thing full scale, and then 
um, use adhesive and put it onto a piece of cardboard, cut the cardboard out and basically put that template in the plane to see if everything looks and feels like it should so it's laid out right. So this here is the 3D print. And I had to do it in a couple pieces so what I, I just scabbed this together on the side to hold it uh, because it was a little bit flimsy right at that right at that joint across there. But that was printed in two pieces, took like uh, maybe 30 hours total between the two. But it's kind of cool because it gives you the whole shape of the knobs, the switches, everything here. And then where the flap switch and other switches go up here. So I'm going to go try that out and uh, see how that fits and go from there. Hopefully that'll be it and I can stop playing with this instrument panel and start uh, putting it together. So let's go make some fun. All right, so here we are in the hangar where the Lance Air sits. And let's try out this SLA. Got a little makeshift pad, and this is still pretty ugly just because it's all under construction. When it's done, most of this will probably be painted, finished up and painted. And then what's not painted will be covered with upholstery or whatever. All right, so let's grab. <laughs> this thing's like a, a recliner. Once you get in it, you're laid right back. All right, so here's our SLA. This is the one we 3D printed. A little scab on the side. And it should fit down in here. But it looks like... Uh, looks like there's a little extra thickness here on the side of this. Like the previous builder, builder <clears throat> added a piece on the inside here. So I'm going to cut that off. I have the perfect tool for it, this little Dremel tool. So let me do that real quick. Let's get some of this out of the way. Just so I'll cover it in fiberglass. All right, it's going to be a little noisy, but here we go. Hot. All right, 
let's switch this blade up <clears throat> and one that's a little bit longer have one like this it'll reach a little bit further in there Ooh, she's hot just bumped it with my finger <clears throat> Locked in. And let's make some more noise. All right, let's see how she fits. There we go. Doesn't look like it's perfectly straight up though. Shave just a little bit here. feels. All right, that'll get me pretty close. All right, let's sit down and see how see how it looks and feels from the pilot side. Oh, there we go. This is a pretty comfy airplane once you're in here. So uh, that's pretty good because the uh, flap switch would be right here. This is landing light, wig wag. Of course, throttle would be out a little bit here, but I could still reach prop. And I can read that screen. That's the, that fuel injection control head right there. And I can read that from here. Uh, and I got room for a center console. Might even have room for a very short cup holder for a water bottle or something. It looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. So now the rest will be printing out the upper half of this onto a cardboard template. I, I did it a while ago. This was the original design. It even had air vents here. I didn't like these because it was too close to your knees. Let's slide this back here. And let's just set it in. Kind of give you an idea of what this panel will look like. So, <clears throat> I've actually raised the bottom edge of this panel I think it's almost uh, three quarters of an inch. This has been raised up. You can tell by the SLA to the old print here. Because I've removed all the switches that were across the bottom and, and the G3X came down just a little bit. So it didn't change anything on the top. I think my seat will probably have a little more backing. And right there I can see just over the I can see the front of the cowling there. So that's pretty good. And it sits a little bit tail down at the moment. I like it. <laughs>